Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if it's the rapture, we'll all do it at the same time. Won't that be something? Pray over. Glory to God. Somebody got a prayer request tonight. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Praise the Lord. Brother Charles' wife is sick and we need to pray for her. Okay. Somebody else? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Nehemiah. Amen. Go ahead, Mike. Pray for all of them too. Okay, somebody else? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Seems like the devil likes to afflict people with headaches that come to church. Jesus, heal. She has one almost every day. God, heal. Move this. walking and we did some singing uh, and when I left I I you know you, when you're with somebody that needs healing and you know they do sometimes the devil will try to make you have less faith because of what you see they need but I, I told the Lord I said Lord this don't affect you at all you know just because somebody needs you that don't make you where you can't do you can do and uh, God's the same. God's going to take care of things. That's where that's the position He's in. And I believe Him to take care of Sister Rita. I believe Him to do it. I told her this afternoon. I said, it's going to come out good. You wait and see. It's going to come out good. So pray for her that God will just take care of everything she needs and give her a good cheer 
give a good cheer because you know it's it's scary to you when things happen that you it's never happened to you before and you don't know what's you can't understand what the outcome might be but I'm looking for a good outcome for her so pray for Sister Rita anybody else remember Sister Cherie she's having symptoms of pain and she's still clean and healing and deliverance and yes. pray for her that the Lord will move any symptom of sickness off of her please remember Heidi that the Lord will give deliverance and help and grace to you and that he will not heal my body and be cured okay remember that I'd like for y'all to pray for um, Teresa and John and David and Paula and Myra and Bill and um, Ray, Ray Ann Smith, uh, all of these, they're, they're people that we met, we met through the um, through our outreach on Facebook and the other YouTube and everything. And I just feel like we need to just call them out and ask God to bless each one of them. Um, remember everybody on that too. Uh, especially those that really need healing. Pray that God will heal their bodies. And um, is there anybody else that's got a request tonight? Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, believing in Him. Also remember Sister Henson, Brother Henson's family. Amen.
I want to tell y'all one of the uh, chief um, uh, that my husband would say. Y'all want to know what it was? Sometimes he would listen to me. <laughs> Sometimes he would agree with me. Sometimes he would even realize he was wrong and I was right. That was one of the greatest testimonies that he was really saved. <laughs> really? It's the truth. I thought. Something happened to this man. I knew he was saved. I don't mean he had to agree with me all the time. But there was times when he had to say, you're right. And I was. Of course, there were times when I wasn't. But when I was, he was willing to say, you're right. And I, that, that meant a lot to me. It made me know that he really had the victory. <laughs> I'll tell you one more thing about it. I don't know why I'm remembering all this stuff, but um, he would wash the dishes and he called it sanctification practice. <laughs> and so when somebody would visit us, maybe we had an evangelist come in, he'd see if they were sanctified or not. <laughs> I'll tell you somebody that's sanctified. That young man right there, he'll do anything. Amen. He'll wash the dishes, he'll sit at the table, he'll clean the floor up. He'll do anything. And cheerfully. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother Don, you will too. <laughs> I'm going to be talking about people that are sanctified. But Brother Mike, in his mind, a man that would do that, you know, just to take some pressure off his wife, just to be good to her, he thought that was a, a sign of sanctification. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I agree with you. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you for helping us to live right and do right. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Next sister, now you're going to lead for us tonight.
page 74.
this ministry 30 years, 31 years ago. I don't know. We've been this little tiny church. Aaron, you've known us as just this little tiny church. How many years? How many years have you been around? 10? 18. 20. Almost 20 years Aaron's been around. Long time. We've been this little tiny church. And um, then all of a sudden the Lord with COVID and things happening and somebody getting cancer and I try to put a song up a day with the kids when we were, you know, the Lord just opened some doors that changed a lot of things. But yet, still, when people come in here that have watched it, I watched somebody last week, last Sunday night, they walked in and they're like, they get the look of, wow, it's really tiny because you can't see the back, you only see the front, and you just see that some of us are just still here. Sister Annie's been with us since the beginning. and um, But then the Lord, when He extended this, he started adding people to us. And some are out there, and some he brought here. And I thank the Lord. Um, you know, I am an only child, and I needed a sister, a sibling. And I thank the Lord for bringing Sister Tammy to me. I'm in so much trouble after church, but it's all right because she's <laughs> going to sing and sing the glory down, and I appreciate the Lord for it. People have asked her, would you just sing in the services? And so we're going to just try it. And um <laughs>
Did you want to play it for you? You go ahead. All right. What yeah. key do you like it in? Uh, I guess uh, I'll let you take the lead. Mm -hmm. All right, now I'll follow you. Okay. Again. Is this road your traveling? Brother Michael, uh, Brother Michael, excuse me, Brother Don, you're not Brother Michael. 
Brother Don, that reminded me of Brother Michael because he sang that he sang that song a lot. I can hear him sing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, Brother Don is going to start doing Wednesday nights for a while because he's working over there at the maze, and uh, so we're going to let him do Wednesday nights. This this week, month we're going to looks like in October we're going to have two guests. We usually have Brother Staten on the second Wednesday, and then sometime during that month, we want to get Brother and Sister Stidham. They're around. They were up at Lakeland, and they are a very blessed couple, and they will be a blessing to us. And I was asking the Lord, well, did He want me to um, tell Brother Staten that we were going to have somebody else this month? The Lord said both. So, both. The Lord wants us to be blessed and helped. So we're going to have both. So we've got a lot, lot to look forward to in October. Brother Don's going to be uh, preaching on Wednesday night and the other Wednesday nights or whatever. Brother Stidman then might be able to come on Sunday morning and Sunday night. So it might work out that way instead of a Wednesday. So we'll just see how it works out as, as time goes on. And Brother Charles, you're always welcome. Anytime. We appreciate it. Appreciate you coming. I was just going to show you. He brought me something. I'm not sure what he brought. I'd given him my books. My books when I saw him. Just one or did he give you three of them? He gave three. I gave him three of them. Okay. And uh, did you, do you speak Spanish? Did you, no. I uh, had it translated? Yeah, Google translated. Oh, okay. Then I had some friends that proofread. Okay. Okay. Practicing. Rhyming Thoughts, it's called. It's got, it's a lot of poems. I'll read a little bit. It says, Why is there so much hate in the world today? Why does prejudice keep coming our way? Why can't we live to learn, learn to live with each other? Why can't we become like sister and brother? Complete poem inside. So, that sounds good, doesn't it? I'm going to read it and then I'm going to pass it on. Okay? If y'all would like to read his poems. They sound good to me. Okay, oh, you do? Okay. Well, just tell him then. Okay, we thank you very much. And, and then he gave me a calendar and a pen. So, I'm blessed. <laughs> and just came by surprise. And thank God for you. Uh, tonight, I, I have a thought that I want to preach. And it's called, The Anointing Will Carry You Through. The Anointing Will Carry You Through. Praise the Lord. You know, uh, some people that are saved... They don't sense the anointing in themselves, and they don't. They think of the anointing as to be on a uh, an evangelist or a minister, you know, like a pastor or some preacher. But I've got news for you: if you've got Christ in your heart, I mean, if He's living there, you have the anointing. You do. Why? Because His name is Jesus Christ, and Christ means the Anointed One. He's in there. You've opened your heart to Him and asked Him to come into your heart, and He's living inside of you. You have the anointing. You may not understand it, or you may not uh, accept it. You may uh, be too shy to, to claim it. But you're going to see as you go along in your life that people are going to respond to what's inside of you. Because Christ, when He's there, He makes Himself known. He doesn't just, you know, sit in the background and never never pushes forward. And if you know, if you read the Bible, you find out that He went all kinds of places while He was alive on this earth. And He, the Bible says the books that couldn't, None of the books, all those books that's ever been written would not be able to contain all the things that he did. So he wasn't just sitting at home waiting. He was out there working. And if he's in your life, he's going to be working through you. And that's the anointing when Christ works through you. And I wanted to preach tonight, the anointing will carry you through. Some of us uh, need to hear about the anointing. They need, you need to hear about the anointing. And then the second uh, part of this was things are about to get a whole lot better. 
Things are about to get a whole lot better. I know it doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like it's going to get a whole lot better. But in the Lord, things are about to get a whole lot better. And the anointing is the reason. The anointing of the Lord. You know, Jesus, when He was baptized, God spoke and said, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And that's really what, when people say, Wow, I really sense the anointing in that song. Or that, um, that song was really anointed. That message was really anointed. What you're saying is, I feel the Son of God in that. Come on. I feel Him right. speaking to me, talking to me, helping me. That anointing, I can feel it coming through that. And that's what you're doing. You're just allowing the Savior, hallelujah, to be manifested. And God is saying, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Right. He's not saying you. He's saying Him. When you sing or you preach and something wonderful happens, what is that? That is somebody saying, I feel Jesus. I feel Jesus in that. I feel that anointed Christ in that. If you've got Christ in your life, it's going to come through. And somebody's going to sense that anointing. Hallelujah. First place I want to turn is 1 John 2 and 27. You don't have to stand up because I'm just going to take that verse and go with it. 1 John 2 and 27. It says, but the anointing, well, I'll 3, 26 verse. It says, these things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. And this meant spiritually seduced. In other words, try to work, take you away from Jesus. Take you away from the Word of God. Take you away from the knowledge that you have of salvation and sanctification and the baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire. People will do that, you know. Just in, in just the last day, we've had somebody that says... you. You can't count on the Word of God as it is. You've got to watch it. You've got to read some other kind. <laughs> uh-uh. No, you don't. You don't have to. The Word of God will stand for itself. And it will be right. When you read it, you'll know you're reading something right, not something that's all messed up. But that's, that is what is called people that try to seduce you away from God's truth. And, and living by His truth. He said, These things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which you have received of Him abideth in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in Him. You shall abide in Him. In Jesus, Aaron, in Jesus. That's what He wants you to do. He wants you to live in Jesus. And Jesus to live in you. When you live in Jesus and Jesus lives in you, the anointing is in your life, right? It only, it's only reasonable. Because Christ is the anointed one. I don't know why it's so hard to see that, but it's, it's like, it, it is that way. It is. And when you take it, when you take it for your own, this is mine now. The anointing is mine because the anointed one is inside of me. And it's not a small thing. It's a great thing. Hallelujah. And that anointing will carry you through no matter what you have to face. Hallelujah. The anointing that's in your life, that's, but the anointing which you have received of Him abideth in you. It's going to stay there in you. And you need not that any man teach you. That doesn't mean you don't need a Sunday school teacher. That doesn't mean you don't need a pastor. But it means that you can perceive the truth yourself. Somebody doesn't have to come along and say, you don't know the truth, but I'm going to tell you the truth. The anointing is teaching you the truth. And that's why when somebody comes along and says, you don't need this Bible, you need another one and because you, you can understand it better. You tell them, I don't need that better thing. I've got the true Word of God. 
The anointing has taught me that. And I'll stick by that anointing. I'll stand up for that anointing. Because it's taught me. I didn't need you to come along and tell me that I can't understand God's Word. When He's helping me to understand His Word all the time. But as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, and is truth and it is no lie, and even as hath taught you, ye shall abide in Him. Think about the joy of always abiding in Christ. Always being right where He is. And He being right where you are. Isn't that wonderful? That's the joy of the anointing of Christ in having it in your life. And if you are His, the Spirit of Christ is coming to your heart crying, Abba, Father, you got that anointing. That anointing is in your life. Hallelujah. So you, you realize, how many of you have Christ in your life? Raise your hand. Out there, raise your hand if you have Christ in your life. You know you do, okay? Then you have the anointing in your life. You have the anointing. You, how else could it be? Well, Kevin, how else could it be? Can you have Christ in your life and not have the anointing? No. Because He's that's who he that's who He is. That's what He is. And He wants you to understand that that is leading you and guiding you and helping you. Let's look at another verse, Isaiah ten and twenty seven. About the anointing. Isaiah 10 and 27. It says, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off thy shoulder and his yoke from off thy neck and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointed. Anointing. This is talking about Israel's enemies, the Assyrians, and that they that God was going to break that yoke from off their neck that had them under bondage. But this last part of the Scripture is really speaking to all of us. It's speaking to us that feel a yoke of bondage on our lives. A yoke of uh, somebody trying to press us down and somebody trying to keep us from loving God and worshiping God and being what God wants us to be, that anointing is going to destroy that yoke off of you. How many of you feel a yoke of bondage sometime on you? Raise your hand. Okay. Two hands, right? The yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. Because Christ is in you, because you have asked Him to be your Savior, and you know that you have repented and you have asked Him to be uh, to save you. you. You go with that. And you believe that that anointing will not allow the yoke of bondage to stay on your life. It won't allow it. The anointing won't. If you live for Christ, if you abide in Him, if you live by His Word, you do what He says. I mean, Jesus is the Word of God. If you live by the Word, the anointing is going to destroy the yoke of bondage off your life. The, the anointing is going to take care of things. And the, the title of my message tonight is The anointing, anointing Will Carry You Through. The anointing will carry you through. It'll carry you through almost well anything you can think of. It'll carry you through everything. Whatever comes along. It has me. I'll just tell you that. It's carried me through everything. I've been serving the Lord since I was 26 and I'm 72 now. And I've gone through a lot. It's carried me through. Because I wouldn't know What's going to happen next? I still don't know what's going to happen next. I don't. But I feel like God's got it in His hands and it's going to be all right. I told Sister Rita that this afternoon. God's, it's, God's got this in His hands. It's going to be all right. 
And you know, it's that anointing that makes you know that. You know it because of Christ being in your life and you know in Him is yea and amen. I mean, it's not yea and nay, it's yea and amen. Glory to God, when you ask for something, He's going to give it to you. He's going to help you in every, every need you have. God is going to be there and Jesus is going to take care of you. And you're going to feel uh, sealed. It said that we are sealed by that Holy Spirit that God has given us. We're sealed by it. And you feel sealed, that anointing that's in your life. You feel that uh, presence of Jesus. You feel that presence of His power. All power in heaven and earth is given unto me. You begin to feel that power. You begin to feel that everlasting life, which He, he is. You feel that, I don't know what's going to happen, but I don't feel like it's going to be bad. I feel like I'm going to make it through this, and things are going to work out. And I'm not sure what God's going to do, but I have that anointing, that feeling of that anointing in my life, and that He's going to help me to be what I ought to be. Help me to do what I ought to do. That's wonderful, isn't it? In Acts chapter 9, we read about Paul. And we see that Paul, he was not what you would call a great candidate for, uh, for the anointing of God. <laughs> I mean, it didn't seem like he was because he was killing the Christians. That doesn't sound like somebody that would God would choose, but He did. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus in the synagogues that he found any of his way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus. And suddenly there shined round right about him a light from heaven, and he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. And hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard of that many of this man, how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And I, Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose and was baptized. And when he had received me, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus, and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. In other words, he didn't have to wait a long time to find out what God was doing with him. He didn't have to search it out and seek out what, what it was all about. Instead of worrying over it, he wasn't worried over it. I'm going to preach it now. I know what it is and I'm going to preach it. I know who it is and I'm going to preach about him. I've met the Son of God and now the Son of God's going to be preached through my mouth. Hallelujah. Saul decided, I'm, I, I'm going to do what he wants me to do. When he said, what would you have me to do? He meant it. He meant I'm going to do whatever you show me to do. And that's what you do when you have found that Christ is in your heart. Some of you, 
may not have really thought of it like this before, before I preached it tonight. You may never really thought about that the true Christ, the true Son of God, is living in your life. And you do not have to be all troubled over whether you have the anointing or not. You need to just go ahead with it. Go ahead with it. Let it shine. <laughs> Let it come out of your mouth. Speak it. Tell it. Right. Live it. Yes, amen. Tell somebody. Come on. You know, I didn't realize until last night, Jesus is living in my heart. And I, I, I'm going to let Him have His way in my life. I'm going to show you that I've got Him in the life. I'm going to let you see me. And I'm going to preach Him to you. Because He's here. He's with me. Right. I'm not what I used to be. Right. Was Saul what he used to be? No. They even changed his name to Paul. He wasn't what he used to be. And you're not either. You're not. You're not either. You're what God wants you to be. He's chosen you. You're a chosen vessel. You're somebody, hallelujah, that's got Christ living in them. And you're walking around in this world that's lost without Him. And you go ahead and let Him move through you. They, nobody may say, well, I felt the anointing there. They might not. They might just say, well, what in the world? What happened to her? What happened to him? What happened to them? But the Lord wants you to respond to that Christ that's living inside of you. Respond to Him. Be willing to let Him shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Why do you say, I'm going to let it shine? Because it's in there. and it, Either it's going to shine out, or it's going to be like a pressure cooker. After a while, the lid's going to fly off, and you're going to have to let it shine. Because He's in there. Right. You know, the Bible says, although all of heaven is surrounding Him. He's in the center of all of heaven. Do you think all the people in heaven are feeling the effects, the influence of Jesus Christ? Well, I do. Whoa! You think I shout here when I get over there? Glory to God. You feel that influence. You feel that power. You like it. You want to tell somebody about it. You want it to be evident. You want others to know that He's done this for me. He's living in me. He'll live in you too. Right? He'll live in you too. He's not a respecter of persons, the Bible says. Yes, he does have chosen chosen vessels like Paul. I mean, he wrote scriptures. We, he's not calling us all to write scriptures. But he has called us to respond to him, Phil. Respond to him. Let him be real. Believe in him in your life, in your heart. And let him have his way. Even if it costs you, let him have his way. Do what he... Do what you know He wants you to do. Do it. Hallelujah. And the anointing will carry you through. It will. Because it's His anointing. It's not ours and our anointing. It rubs off on us. It is on us. Hallelujah. Zechariah 8 and 9. I'm going to let the Bible tell it to you. Zechariah 8 and 9. See, this is, a, this is a thought that I have. The thought I have is, I'm going to preach this, and then somebody's going to grab a hold of it, and in Timbuktu or wherever they are, they're going to preach it. They're going to preach Jesus Christ. Because the anointing is going to be so strong in their lives. It's going to carry them right through into that thing that God wants them to do. The anointing will carry you into what God wants you to do. He'll help you to do it. You won't have to say, oh well, i got to go preach. No! You'll say, where, Lord? What? When? How? Let me do it. Hallelujah. The anointing will be pushing in you. Pushing in you. Wanting to do it. Wanting it to come loose from you. Hallelujah. And be given to somebody else. Zechariah 8 and 9 says this. Hallelujah. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Let your hands be strong. 
Ye that hear in these days these words by the mouth of the prophets, which were in the day that the foundation of the Lord, of the house of the Lord of hosts was laid, that the temple might be built. Let your hands be strong. Let your spiritual hands be strong. He was telling them they were going to need strength to build that house of God. But we're not here building a house of God. We are here building a, 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 the whole temple made up of lively stones into the house of God. We're trying to find those lively stones to be able to build that temple to the Lord in these last days. We're trying to find them. We're looking for them. And our hands need to be strong. We need to say, I'm going to do what the Lord wants me to do. I feel His anointing in my hands. I feel Him in my feet. I feel Him all over me. Right? right? He's not dead. God's not dead. He's still alive. He's not dead in me. He's still alive in me. And I'm going to go with Him. Right. Amen. Right. Hallelujah. When people say, women can't preach. Well, too late. Too late. Why? When the anointing gets in a woman, a man, a boy, a girl, it's too late to say they shouldn't be preaching because the anointing is going to carry it through and carry them through doing what God wants them to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now go back to Zechariah 4. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to start at verse 1. And the angel talked with me come, came again. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. Am I waking you like a man that's wakened out of his sleep? <laughs> you ain't sleeping through this one, are you? Why? The anointing is waking you up. It's trying to get you to understand who you are in the Lord. Who He is inside of you, Brother Kevin. Does Jesus shire inside of you than He is in me? <laughs> no, He isn't. He isn't. He's the same, isn't He? Does the Bible say Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forever? It does. So, He's not. He may use you differently than He does me. But He's still the same. His anointing is there because He's there. Hallelujah. You let Him have His way. Everybody, all of us, let Him have His way. He said, And said unto him, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. And I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said to me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, Lord, no, my Lord. And he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel hath laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall also finish it, and thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me unto you. For who hath despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with those seven. They are the eyes of the Lord which run to and fro through the whole earth. I want to stop right there. The Spirit of the Lord is helping people to be able to um, yield to the anointing. The Spirit of the Lord, it isn't by might nor by power. It isn't by your might or your power. It's by the Spirit of the Lord coming upon you and making it reasonable for you to do what you do. Making it something you want to do. Making it desirable for you to do a work for the Lord. 
Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Then answered I and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Anointed ones. They're like branches of an olive tree. What comes out of olive trees but olive oil? And the oil is flowing out of those branches into the candlestick. And in the candlestick are, is light. It's light. The anointing. This is talking to the Jews in this time. But the anointing of God came down with the Holy Ghost. That's the, where that holy oil comes from. The Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost is, is putting that oil continually into our church. Continually into your heart. Into your life. Continually. You, you say, well, I don't have the Holy Ghost. But the Holy Ghost is putting that Desire for the Holy Ghost in your life. He's causing you to seek that uh, oil for it not to be just with you, but in you. Because God wants to use you in a mighty way. And that oil is what helps you to be able to be used because that's that where that anointing is. Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are working together to bring that anointing into your life. To cause you to live anointed. You know, Romans in Romans 11, it talks about us Gentiles being grafted into that olive tree. You see that? Talks about it. Where we are wild, a wild olive tree, and God grafts us into that olive tree that is Israel. Why do they use olive trees? Because olive trees is where you get olive oil. And oil is anointing. When I take this oil, this is olive oil right here. And I lay this on your head. I did to you tonight, did I, or was it this morning? This morning? Did you tonight? I see it shining on your head. <laughs> it's there. That, that is symbolizing the Spirit of God coming into your life and doing for you what you need to have done. And He said, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church and we'll, they'll anoint you with oil. That's that olive oil we've anointed you with. And it's to symbolize that power, that spirit, that anointing that's going to carry you through. That anointing that's going to carry your healing through and cause you to be able, hallelujah, to get well even though the devil says you got to be sick. The anointing speaks to you and says, no, you don't have to be. No. The anointing begins to minister to you and cause you to understand God's will for your life where you can feel the chosenness of your life. God wants you to feel chosen. He doesn't want you to feel like you're just an average somebody, Christian, you know, that's Never going to do anything for God. That's what I was. I was just a member of a church for a, a while. But there was something in me that wanted to do more. And it was that anointing. The anointing is going to carry you through. The anointing carried David through to writing almost all the Psalms in the Bible. Lots of them. The anointed carried him through to do that. The anointed carry John through to write the book of Revelation where he'd never seen some of those things, never knew what some of those things were. We don't even know them yet. But we know it's anointed that the Word of God has come through John's life, has come through Paul's life, has come through Matthew's life, and Mark's, and Luke's, and John's. All of them. The anointing. The Holy Ghost has taught them the words to write that are scriptures. We may not, we are not called to write scriptures, but we sometimes are called to quote scriptures 
in such a way that people know that God has spoken to them. So, the anointing will carry you through. Come on, man. Hallelujah. I'm going to go back to 1 John 2 and 27. And I'm going to read that again. That's a very important scripture. Sometimes the devil will come and he'll try to say, well, this old-fashioned way, it, you don't have to do that anymore. I know they did it back then, but you don't have to live like that anymore. The devil will try to come and make you think that things have changed, that times have changed. And that you no longer have to come out and be separate and touch not the unclean thing. The devil will tell you that. But the anointing will hold you true. The anointing will cause you to look at what you're doing and cause you to weigh it against God's Word and say, I'd rather not do it. I'd rather be pleasing in the Lord's sight. Because you know, when Jesus is in your heart, He's not going to want to do anything that God doesn't want Him to do. That's why I said He comes into your heart crying to have a father. Because He ain't going to want to be, you know, you might want to wear jewelry, but He's going to say, no jewelry. My word, no jewelry. You might want to wear shorts, He's going to say, no shorts. You might want to cut your hair with you women, and He's going to say, don't do it. You might wear, want to wear long hair. He's going to say, you men, He's going to say, don't do it. That anointing is going to teach you. But the anointing which you have received of Him abideth in you. And you need not that any man teach you, but as that same anointing teacheth you of all things, and it's truth, and it's no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall abide in Him. Isn't that wonderful? What a scripture. Even as that anointing is teaching you, you're abiding in Him. Right? He'll help you to. He'll make it worth it. Make it worth it for you. Just to follow after that anointing. And that anointing will destroy the devil's yoke over your life. If he's tried to keep you bound to this world and living like the world, the anointing will destroy that off of you. In the name of Jesus, Father, I look to you right now. God, you know there's somebody in here and somebody out there that has had that yoke of bondage over their lives for a long time. And Lord, we ask you, Father, some of them, are, they've been a Christian a long time. They've just not ever come out from under that yoke of bondage. Lord, I ask you right now, if you would destroy that yoke of bondage off of their lives with that anointing with anointing of Christ, that the anointing of Christ would destroy that yoke of bondage off of their lives, that they would go free, and they would feel free, and be willing to do whatever you want them to do because of the anointing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Go ahead and say
Don's going to preach Wednesday night. So come back and we're going to have a good service. God bless you.